Washington Grown is brought to you by the Potato Farmers of Washington. Learn why Washington is home to the world's most productive potato fields and farmers by visiting potatoes.com. And by Northwest Farm Credit Services, supporting agriculture and rural communities with reliable, consistent credit and financial services today and tomorrow. And by the Washington State Department of Agriculture's Office of the State Aquaculture Coordinator, supporting the viability and vitality of Washington agriculture. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gortzen and welcome to Washington Grown. I'm in beautiful Spokane, Washington, and the people here love farm fresh produce. In this episode, we're gonna take you on the road to show you how your favorite Washington Grown items get from the field to your local store. We'll tag along with truck driver Blake to see what it takes to transport fresh produce across the state. It's always been fun. I've always enjoyed it. Places you get to go, a lot of good experiences. And I'll make a delicious apple cake at Made with Love Bakery in Spokane. Why don't you crack these eggs? Okay. And then if we get eggshells, we can scoop yeah. them out. She's <laughs> already <laughs> planning ahead. Then Tomas is visiting George Washington for its 4th of July celebration, featuring one of the world's largest cherry pies. It's an event worth coming to, it sounds like. Absolutely, every year. We never miss it. All this and more today on Washington Grown. Bon appetito! Bon appetito! There are no fingers in there There's either. no fingers so in it, and they, and they still look green. <laughs> this is happy food right here. That is heaven on a fork. <laughs> look at that smile. <laughs> oh, I've never done that Sweet, before. Right? Got my hard hat on. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Today, we're visiting Made with Love Bakery in Spokane. Even though it might look small, this place is chock full of heart. Plopped down, super homey, like really chic, artistic space. A really warm setting. Small, but cozy. I think a place where it's really inclusive and welcoming. And has obviously really delicious baked goods. I want people to come in and feel like they are at home. Owner Callie Johnson started baking when she was young and never stopped making people smile. In sixth grade, I just decided I wanted to start a bakery. From that moment on, just started taking steps to get there. So your dream has turned out, has worked out for you. Yes. It is just a really sweet place um, to be. It's really calm. It kind of feels like home. I feel really comfortable here. I really love baking for people. That just brings me so much joy. I think people taste that when they eat it yeah. because there's care that has gone into it. I can tell. Yeah. It really is <laughs> made with love. It is. I love the Pop-Tart that she makes. The pie is to die for. The cinnamon sugar Pop-Tarts. It's the best pecan bar you're ever going to have in your life. The muffins. The molasses cookies. And her scones are also absolutely amazing. I've kind of tried it all, so... <laughs> Later in the show, Kelly and I will bake her favorite family apple cake recipe featuring Washington's own Granny Smith apples. Messes are inevitable. <laughs> I'm often saying whoops when I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> whoops. <laughs> We all enjoy our fresh locally grown fruits, grains, dairy, meat, and vegetables. And here on Washington Grown, we love to feature the farmers who grow them. But let's not forget about the hard work that goes into getting them from the farm to your table. Today, I'm riding along with longtime truck driver Blake Smith, who drives for CMI Orchards out of Wenatchee to talk about what life is like behind the wheel. We're on the road. We're on the road. So have you ever rode in a truck before? No, actually, it's going to be my first time. It's amazing what you can see versus sitting in the car. Blake's been a truck driver for 30 years, and his career was early in the making. From an early age, I was always wanting to drive truck. I used to be real big into building models. The first truck I drove was the first truck model I built. So what kind of qualities does it take to be a good truck driver like yourself? you got to realize what you're driving. It's not a car. Uh, just takes much more being attentive and paying attention to your surroundings. They take a lot longer distance to stop than people realize. If there's one or two things that you'd like the normal public to know about driving trucks, what would it be? We're not just a seat filler. 
happen to be really responsible. What we're driving here is actually you know, a big piece of equipment. You always got to be on the defense. You see somebody at an intersection, you just expect them to pull in front of you. <laughs> right. You notice I don't have a rear view mirror <laughs> because yeah. it, it, it's, it's useless. useless. <laughs> yeah. There's been many a times I'll look at my regular mirror and thinking I'm all right and then look down realize there's a car beside me that I couldn't see in my regular mirror. Right. Blake works through the year to deliver apples and other produce from the orchards to the processing plants. He does two routes per day and where he's headed changes from day to day. Usually the night before we're being text uh, our information what we've got going on the next day and, and that could be as far as down in Tri-Cities or as far as Orville up north. Really? Yes. Wow, that's a long day. Yes. Today, Blake is delivering empty apple bins from Wenatchee to an orchard near Quincy. As it turns out, his job is just one piece of the larger puzzle of transport and agriculture. My name is Rafael of Wendy's. We're at Winchester Orchard. Rafael is the orchard's farm manager. His job is to keep track of what he needs to transport, including how many trucks he'll need for the next day. I have to order the trucks that I need for tomorrow around 3 p.m. today. And that takes you knowing when you're going to be picking things, how much you're going to be picked. You have to kind of guesstimate what the people are going to do and, and then make your orders, you know, day ahead of time. You know, a picker picks four or five bins, six bins uh, a day, you know, but when you have uh, approximately uh, 125 pickers, uh, that, you know, that'll end up being about uh, 600 bins. So that translates to about 10 trucks a day. That's just one of the things that, that we have to take care of, you know. Yeah. I think a lot of people forget that all these trucks we see on the freeway crossing us and passing and, you know, going down the road, we can't go about our normal lives without the things they're carrying. It's the food, it's the, all of our Amazon orders <laughs> are in those trucks. Oh yeah, it's always been fun. I've always enjoyed it. Places you get to go, a lot of good experiences, you know, a lot of good. It's a good living. It is. But we're glad you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> we all love a good grilled cheese, but the people at Melt's Extreme Grilled Cheese serve this classic American sandwich with an exciting twist. Today, they've designed a special grilled cheese just for us called the Granny Green Bluff that uses our very own Washington grown apples. Normally, when people think of a grilled cheese, maybe one, Maybe two cheeses, but that's not what I see here. No, there's a six in it. <laughs> six that's another cheeses. reason why we're so excited. All right, well, let's get one together and uh, let's see if it's really worth the six cheeses. Okay. Nick starts with a four cheese blend of cheddar, Monterey Jack, mozzarella, and provolone. Next comes the gorgonzola. We like to say that these are little bombs <laughs> in every bite. The sixth cheese is a whipped brie mousse. Next comes bacon and an apple slaw made with local Granny Smith apples. We have the sweet, we have the salty, we have the savory, we need the bitterness. The little acid, the Every tang. flavor contrast you'll ever Oh see. my gosh, it's all right there, man. Finally, we add a balsamic fig reduction and then cover the sandwich until everything melts together. That should be illegal. Five stars out <laughs> on the middle of the street, man. I'm not sure I got it all. I better try it again. <laughs> Do you enjoy a grilled cheese sandwich? I do, yeah. I love grilled cheese. The more cheese, the better. It's time to kick it up a notch. Oh my God. <laughs> That's really good. It is good. <laughs> the OMG <laughs> says it all. It's like so many different flavors that just combine together to make a beautiful sandwich. <laughs> a little piece of heaven. Mm -hmm. So this is probably something you could see yourself ordering then, huh? Yes. But you won't get it at my house. You gotta come down here to get it. <laughs> Coming up, I'm making a special family apple cake recipe with Callie Johnson at Made with Love Bakery in Spokane. Why don't you crack these eggs? Okay. And then if we get eggshells, we can scoop yeah. them out. <laughs> All right, so already planning ahead. And we're in the kitchen at Second Harvest, trying out some sausage, apple, and cranberry stuffing. We're back at Made With Love Bakery in Spokane. Here, the name says it all. It kind of feels like home. A really warm setting. I mean, everything I've had out of here has been just 
obviously made with love. You can tell it's just like mom's cooking. I feel really comfortable here. I hope that it feels cozy in here and when people come in, they just feel known and loved. Owner Kelly Johnson keeps things small and simple, focusing on quality and heart. Because I do such small batches, there is a lot of care and intention that goes into each batch that I make. There's no shortcuts. You come in and you know it's fresh. You know who made it. The ingredients are just top notch. It is just a really sweet place um, to be. It's really calm. She has a heart for this town and this neighborhood. Every time I'm in here, Callie greets people by name. And if she doesn't know someone's name, she asks their name so that she can remember it next time. So what are we gonna bake today? We are going to make an apple cake. Okay. So it's a very simple cake. Mm -hmm. um, just some yummy flavors. The apples, use orange juice as well. So it tastes really fresh. Good. Yeah. Sounds delicious. I yes. love apple cake. Good. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to head to the kitchen to start baking. These are some Granny Smith apples. Awesome. And I get all of my produce as much as I can locally. Mm -hmm. So we've got Green Bluff here in yeah. Spokane, Washington. So these are from Green Bluff. Very good. Yeah. Just a few miles away. Yes. I don't like my treats to be too sweet. Mm -hmm. um, so the Granny Smith have a nice tart flavor yeah. to them. It balances well with the sweet. So this is a very simple recipe. We just throw everything straight into the mixer okay. and whip it up to get started. Why don't you crack these eggs? Okay. And then if we get eggshells, we can scoop yeah. them out. <laughs> All right. She's already <laughs> planning ahead. This is nice and simple. It's very simple, okay. which is great because you need pretty simple recipes when you're making mm -hmm. a lot of things. We add flour, sugar, baking powder, salts, and the eggs into the mixing bowl. Then we start peeling the apples. That's beautiful. Yeah. How come I don't have one of these? Yeah, these are really handy. It was fun. <laughs> We added vegetable oil, vanilla, and orange juice, and then mix it up. If you want to pour half of this in there, okay. then we need to slice these in half. I'm gonna start just layering these. What are your favorite things to bake? <laughs> I love making pie. Making the little lattice okay. top is really mm -hmm. fun. It's like a piece of art. It is. So. Look at that, that looks beautiful. Yeah, I could sprinkle mm -hmm. some cinnamon sugar. That looks so pretty already. <laughs> that looks perfect. That good? Yeah. Okay. And then let's go ahead and do the last of the batter. Messes are inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm often saying whoops when I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> whoops. <laughs> There's just a process with baking, and so it's fun to see things, you know, turn from flour and sugar and then into a dough, into and then something. you put it into the oven, and because then you get to eat it afterwards, and that's yeah. the best. We put the cake in the oven at 350 degrees for an hour or so, then we bring it out. For the icing, we mixed orange juice and powdered sugar and then poured it over the top after the cake had cooled. Now comes the best part. Our favorite part, we get to taste Yay! it! Okay, <laughs> let me cut into this. Apples on the bottom yes. and apples in the middle. Got our little cinnamon swirl in there. Yes. Okay. Dig in. <gasps> Mm-hmm. That is delicious. Thank you. Not too sweet, but you get a bit of the sour from the apples. Crunch on the outside. Yes. That is delicious. Thank you yeah. for letting me bake with you. Of course. It was, <laughs> it was so awesome. fun. <laughs> yeah. To get the recipe for Callie Johnson's apple cake from Made with Love Bakery, visit wagrone.com. Drivers aren't the only ones working hard to bring fresh produce out of the orchards and into the stores. Today, I'm talking to Cole Jessup, logistics manager at CMI Orchards in Wenatchee. His job is to monitor all the deliveries the trucks are making and make sure everything is running smoothly. Well, I try to uh, get everybody's orders in as soon as I can. Each uh, sales assistant okay. gives me their uh, daily needs. Okay. I try to get those as quick as I can so I can get them to the truck and get the truck locked up as quick as I can so he can know what to do the next day. That keeps me busy pretty much all morning long and then I'm just kind of Riding herd on the trucks that afternoon, making them sure they're where they're supposed to be. CMI delivers fresh produce, including pears, cherries, apples, and apricots. 30% of their produce goes overseas, and the rest gets delivered across the United States. Most of our delivered clients are in the Northeast, Midwest, Texas, California, 
Ohio. What are you looking for when it comes to reliable drivers to get these products where they need to go? Safety being number one, okay. reliability being number two. And then I would say whoever I'm working with, communication. All the buyers out there, they want to know where their truck is, they want to know if it's going to get there on time. So I've got to have the answers for them. So I need to communicate with somebody who's going to give me the right answers, good or bad, I just need the right answer. So when a truck leaves this facility, it's not like, see you later, don't know what's happening. Right. You know what's going on, where that truck is at. You've got to know where it's at. Yeah. yeah. If the driver has GPS on their cell phone, it can have that plugged right into your system so you know right where he's at. If there's any issues, if he's got a flat tire, mm -hmm. if you had to pull over for uh, you know some engine work, right. you know you need to know, okay, he's pulled over, how long is it going to be till he's back on the road? There's no way to get fruit from the orchard to the warehouse to the customer without trucks. F-150 with a you know, little trailer isn't, isn't gonna get it done. <laughs> right. We need a few more apples yeah. in that, we, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> You've really got to set yourself up with a network of uh, reliable carriers. You have probably 20 different phone calls coming in, 15 different new emails coming in from guys that you, you don't work with, you right. don't know who they are, you really have to do your homework. You got to team up with the right guys. It's about yeah, who you work with. That's right. We appreciate you doing what you're doing. I can't have my apples without you. <laughs> that's right. And we like you to get those apples <laughs> and right. pears. Yep. Excellent. <laughs> Coming up, Tomas is in George at their annual 4th of July celebration, featuring one of the world's largest cherry pies. It's an event worth coming to, it sounds like. Absolutely, every year. We never miss it. Apricots, a type of tree fruit, are one of the oldest cultivated fruits and are thought to originate from India or China around 3000 BC. Most commercial apricot trees in the United States today are descendants of the varieties brought over in the 17th century from Spanish missionaries. And when it comes to growing apricots, Washington is the number two producer in the United States. Importantly, these delicious little tree fruits provide a wide variety of health benefits. Dried apricots in particular are a great source of vitamin A, which helps support a healthy immune system and promote good vision. Apricots also provide important antioxidants, like vitamin E, which help keep our cells healthy and functioning normally. They also provide a great source of iron, which our body needs to make new red blood cells so we can deliver oxygen efficiently. Thankfully, there are many ways to enjoy apricots, as they are great eaten by themselves raw or dried, or incorporated into a variety of dishes. You can find many recipes that include apricots in savory or sweet dishes, including salads, rice dishes, and especially desserts like pies, tarts, or even jam. If you're looking to change up your fruit routine, consider the apricot, a nutrient-dense and delicious fruit. Washington is famous for apples, but every 4th of July, the town of George showcases another Washington favorite by creating one of the world's largest cherry pies. I made the trip to George to see how this pie is made, and more importantly, to taste it. In 1957, this event began with the very first world's largest cherry pie. Since then, this annual 4th of July tradition has grown into an all-day event filled with fun activities and capped off with an exciting fireworks show. To learn more about all the activities taking place, I met with event coordinator Debbie Coy. Now the centerpiece seems to be this. This beautiful pie, This yes. beautiful cherry pie. Yeah. So this has been happening since the beginning, right? Since the very beginning. And what's the history about the big cherry pie? They used to pick all the cherries and pit all the cherries and can all of the cherries. <laughs> and they actually had a large cherry pie oven built of brick and they would shove that thing in there and uh, wood fire it all night long. My goodness. Uh, over the years it has progressed so we actually work smarter not harder and we use prepared cherry pie filling and no bottom crust. Debbie said it takes close to 20 volunteers and 36 gallons of prepared cherry filling to make the 8 foot by 8 foot pie. Is this the first time you've been to this event? Yes. It is? It is. Where are you from? Um, Seattle. Seattle. Now what brought you from Seattle to George Washington? This pie. 
You came specifically for that pie. Yes, I did. So th that sounds like a story. What, how did you hear about this pie? What made you say, I've you know, got to go? I, it said the world largest cherry pie, and I had to do it. <laughs> I was like, this is delicious, and it's delicious. I've never had cherry pie. Um, this is the first time I've had it. This is the first cherry pie right here? And so is it a winner? Yeah. Okay, so you'll probably eat cherry pie now. You're going to go home and tell mom and dad? Yes. We like cherry pie. All right, so how many years have you been coming to this festival? 10 years, and I come from Colorado every year, so yeah. Nice. So tell me about the cherry pie. Um, it's big and has a lot of cherries and a lot of ice cream, which the kids really like. So it's pretty awesome. Nice. It's an event worth coming to, it sounds like. Absolutely, every year. We never miss it. Nice. In addition to the cherry pie, they also have a parade, a pit spitting contest, and a pie eating contest. Because I love America, here's what we're gonna do. Me and the camera guy Noah are gonna go one on one right here, mano a mano, to decide who is the king of the hill. Is it me or is it Noah? Let's find out. Three, two, one, go. While cameraman Noah clearly won the pie eating contest, I had a blast celebrating everything cherries and our nation's birthday in George Washington. Tomas and I are in the kitchen at Second Harvest Food Bank in Spokane, and we are joined by the fabulous Laurent Zerati from Fleur de Sel, Cravery in Spokane. <laughs> <laughs> and we love it when you join us to do Thank you. some well, taste testing. I love to be with Good. you, and what a hard job we have today. It's really tough. We are <laughs> testing, taste testing recipes from allrecipes.com. And this recipe has to do with apples, Washington apples. King State for that, right? That's right. right. That's right. We are the number one. And so many varieties that are delicious. Oh. Do you have a favorite? I, I like the, uh, well, you know, I'm kind of in fashion with... Uh, the Honey Crisp? The Honey Crisp, yeah. yes. But you told me that there's a new one coming up. Cosmic Crisp. The Cosmic yes. Crisp. I cannot wait You're to, to like try it. You're going to like that one and, too. Uh, Thomas, you, you had a, a point uh, earlier saying yeah. that, well, the apples, they need to go from point yeah. A to point B. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I had the opportunity to drive in a big rig and transport some apple bins to an orchard. And I gotta tell you, you know, we drive by these diesel trucks every day and we just don't realize what these guys have to go through to make sure that we get everything that we use Fresh yeah. produce. every single day. I mean, hats off, farmers. hats off to those drivers. Yeah. Absolutely. And being a driver is a hard life, but you know, they do it. They it's do cool it well. that you got to Not go. as hard as food tester. That's true. Yeah, we got a pretty tough job. Right. Stuff. Okay, so what <laughs> so we what get to we taste, taste today, uh, sausage apple cranberry Ooh. stuffing from Stacy P. And uh, when we made this, uh, which you'll see in a second, uh, we omitted there's turkey liver in the recipe, but we didn't use that. So just letting you know. Let's make it. See what happens.
well, this doesn't scream like holiday family dinner or no, that's Thanksgiving all the fall region. feast. I know it. It's no, beautiful. It's delicious. You can smell the, and it's the sage and it is. It's beautiful. Mm. You know, stuffings are like mashed potatoes. Everyone can make them so different and so unique. And this one is so flavorful. I mean, I know it's called stuffing, but I, I, it's more like a side dish than anything else. Right. And I think it's delicious because it has the balance of sweetness, savory. Uh, I love the crunchiness of the apple. I mm. could use some, uh, some maybe some nuts. Right. In there, walnuts. Add a little crunch. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, you can do a, a vegetarian one. Add some kale. Mm -hmm. uh, Sauté the kale mm. with it, or even yeah. some uh, some quinoa, uh, some beans. Yeah. This is like a meal unto itself. I think so. With the sausage in it. Yeah. With the sausage, yeah. yes. And I like how you can use apples for savory dishes. Yeah. So Jennifer B says that she <clears throat> adds pecans to the mix. Perfect. Mommy of five <laughs> <laughs> says that she uses fresh herbs instead of yeah. dried herbs. I, I, so you I, just I kind of have to adjust, yeah. I guess. And you know, it's. Uh, Sage, if you have a garden, the sage will last all winter long. So you can sure. get some sage and it's, it's just beautiful. And um, I think it's a great Thanksgiving yes. dressing. Or any time of year. Thank you so much. <laughs> we you. love it. <laughs> to get the recipe for this sausage, apple, and cranberry stuffing, visit wagrown.com. So the next time you're in your local grocery store, think of the well-orchestrated journey your Washington produce has made. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching.